Hey guys, it's Mishi. A few weeks ago we aired a Thanksgiving bonus, in which we brought you excerpts from a conversation I had with Imad Levi, the last rabbi of Baghdad. It was an experiment for us, since it wasn't a regular episode. In fact, it wasn't even really a story, but rather just a lightly edited version of one of the countless interviews we conduct that don't make it onto the show. We asked you if you wanted to hear more of these unreleased recordings, and many of you enthusiastically wrote in saying yes. So, as we work on our next episode, coming your way very soon, here we are, with another little special. Our latest episode was called Achi, My Brother. In it, we told the tale of two siblings and their unusual life together. And today, we're sharing another little sibling bonus. A conversation between our senior producer, Yochai Meital, and his sister, Tmira Feinsilver. My name is Tmira. I'm Yochai's sister. I'm the oldest sister, and I have three brothers. I have eight children. I'm a family physician. I work in a development town in Kiryat Gat, and I work here in the area. I live in Neit Kalim, which is a beautiful yeshuv in the Judean mountains just east of uh, Kiryat Gat. It's quite a rural area, which wasn't um, settled until a few years ago. After the 2005 disengagement, many of the Jewish settlers from the Gaza Strip moved to this region together. Many communities decided to rebuild communities together, and this is one of these communities. The area is a beautiful area. I mean, it's in the hills. It's all covered with uh, vineyards and flowers, and we can just walk out of the house and go take a hike on the hill. So it's really nice. We like living here. So, Yocha, you want to set this one up for us? Sure. So a few years ago, we were working on this episode that actually never materialized about the tribes of Israel. Mm -hmm. You remember that one? Yeah, of course I remember it. And my family is a pretty good case study because we're four siblings, each living a very different lifestyle. My sister and I are pretty close. In many respects, I look up to her and I seek out her advice. But then in some other very fundamental aspects, we're diametrically opposed. Like what? Well, um, I'm secular. She's very religious. Mm -hmm. I'm a left-leaning Tel Avivian. And she was evicted from Nitzarim during the disengagement and has spent many of the years since living in the West Bank. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I, I thought it would be interesting to sort of take a look under the hood of our family dynamics. So I went over to my sister's. It was a Friday afternoon. Her house was this chaotic mess of Shabbat preparations. So we headed outside to the backyard and sat down for a chat. I mean, obviously, like, we have different world views on certain things, and, and we're very similar on certain things. But um, we don't really talk about the things that we don't agree on. Is that in part of how we can sort of all get along and be so close and everything? Because we just sort of, like, agree to disagree, and we understand that there's no point in that? Or is there something in that that's some kind of, like, a denial or something like that? Maybe, actually, it's something very real. We usually don't talk about the things we disagree on. I especially don't talk about it with Abba and Ima because then that causes <laughs> complete uh, uh, <laughs> disagreements. It's, uh -huh. it's very difficult. I mean, I feel that it's very, very emotional when I talk to Abba and Ima about things that really? we disagree mm -hmm. on. It, it's very emotional and very difficult and nothing comes out of that except for emotions. Mm. So I've stopped doing that at all. The political or the religious, you think? Aspects? Both, both. Dafka, the religious aspects are very, very, very sensitive. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that four of us are children from the same parents and we're so different from one another. Very different. Each one is, lives in a very different world. Yeah, for sure. It's interesting because my, the older kids, Aaron and Romema, talk to you a lot about uh, ideology and things you disagree on. They don't have the emotional part, and so they f can feel free to uh, discuss these issues. And I feel really good about that, that they can discuss these issues freely with you. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the other hand, I think that the fact that that's not 
the central issue that we have to discuss all the time when we can agree to disagree enables us to spend time together and just have fun together. Our ideology is very important and we live by it on the one hand. On the other hand, our day-to-day -day lives are built of very many little things. And um, I think that's something very important and we have to put a focus on that. There's much more uh, in common than there is not in common. But we're Jews, so two Jews, three opinions. So we have to <laughs> uh, speak our opinions all the time. <laughs> I'm an observant person, an Orthodox uh, Jew, and uh, even in, if we think of the, com the commandments, there are 613 commandments, not one person can fulfill all of these commandments. You need all the people of Israel in order to fill all of these commandments. Some are meant for women, some are meant for men, some commandments have to do with birth, with death, with times of the year. Not one person can fulfill all of this. Mm -hmm. Only the whole people can fulfill all of the commandments. And I think that's maybe an ideal, even, in which we have to find not only what's in common, but what we have to learn from the other. Because in each of us, there's a lot of good, but we don't have all the good. We don't have mm -hmm. everything we need in order to live in a wonderful country and have a, do everything we need to do. Not one person can do everything. So and I feel... You wouldn't say like you want more and more people or everybody essentially to become uh, orthodox? I wouldn't say it in my sort of sense. I think we have to speak in a much, much broader sense. I think going to the army is a very big mitzvah. Some of the, the mitzvot are social things. And there are many people I know who aren't observant who keep these mitzvot better than I, maybe. For sure. <laughs> It's much easier, and maybe even childish, to want to be friends with people who are like you. And each of us needs our comfortable um, area. I'll send my children to a school that I feel comfortable with in terms of the education, but I don't want everybody to be exactly like me, no. No. You send your kids, now they're old enough to send themselves also to my house in Tel Aviv obviously a very different environment and world than over here and, there, and the way you raise them and stuff like that. But do you ever, do you, are, is there ever like something in you that says maybe that environment or the world could be a bad influence? Is there any like fear in that? Uh, I think fear is not the right uh, word. I'm very happy with our family. And one of the things, even being Orthodox, which is very important to me, is to keep close contact with the family, to be in touch with the family, to be part of the family. There are challenges, okay? Um, if we have to be in a certain situation and it's a difficult situation for us in terms of what we feel comfortable doing or not doing, sometimes it's a challenge. Mm -hmm. And then, so we have to meet the challenge. Life is full of challenges. Yeah. And these are good challenges. These are challenges which uh, help build character and build uh, connections and build the importance of family connections, even if you have challenges. So I think this is really important. Would you still say that if one of your kids would change his lifestyle or something like that, do you think? Um, it would probably be difficult for me if one of my children changed their lifestyle completely. But I hope that I would be acceptive. And it's interesting because I think I also see it in my big kids who are who travel on their own and go and they're really, really happy with their connections also with you as, as an uncle and, and going to see Tel Aviv and not staying in a very closed world but being sort of open to the world. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's also something very important that build a lot in them. Do you feel that um, because of the way you look, which is like an, an orthodox woman, people have like a very strong first opinion of, of you when you go to places as a doctor. That, are people like surprised? Sometimes they are. And they're even more surprised when I say I have eight children. 
There are a lot of ready-made assumptions. In the academic world, it's very, very uh, obvious. On the other hand, when you're who you are, and after people get to know each other, then I think uh, it's easier to accept each other and, mm-hmm. and look one another in the eye and not at the close. <laughs> yeah, that's what's good about radio now. There's no image. That's what I told you at the beginning, uh, that I'm very happy that I'm not, uh, I'm not photogenic in any case, but I'm very happy not to be uh, <laughs> photographed, but just my voice. And then you can really hear what's being said and not the picture with it. Yeah. Maybe if we use our ears more, <laughs> it would be helpful. Any other questions you think I should have asked you or, um, or you want to ask me or maybe? Um, I wonder how, wondering how you see us sometimes. I mean, we, uh, we very much have what we think or our, our, our uh, opinion about things. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't always get along with what you think. Yeah. And still you come, you come for a whole Shabbat, you spend Shabbatot with us. Uh, I really respect that and I wonder how that works for you. Yeah, you know, I just had a kind of a... I mean, it wasn't like an argument or something. We were just talking about our different points of view with, uh, with somebody that, I, that I've been working with on Israel story. He also has a sister who lives in the Shtachim. But um, he was telling me that he basically doesn't visit there unless it's like a, a bar mitzvah or something like that. And even though, like, politically, me and him are pretty much on the same side, I couldn't imagine that. It never even crossed my mind, something like that, let's say, not to come visit you guys when you were living in Efrat. Or, I mean, I always came to visit you wherever you lived, in Efrat, in, uh, in Netzarim. You know, I, I helped you guys uh, okay. um, take stuff out of Netzarim and stuff like that. It never even crossed my mind because, uh, I don't know, maybe like what you said, the love and the connection is deeper than, uh, than ideology and... Um, and also, like, I feel like you're such beautiful and amazing people that I, like, I'm proud to be, you know, your little brother and connected to you and, and the family you're, you've created. I appreciate a lot the fact that we have good connections. It's not Muvan Me Love. It's not uh, mm-hmm. something I take for granted. And sometimes it is being the only girl in the family with three brothers and all of you living in the Tel Aviv area and being the oldest and being religious. So sometimes it does feel a little bit um, lonely because I know that I'm on my own there. And the fact that we do live in a very, very nice community, a very uh, connected community is very helpful. And also the fact that I know that no matter what, there's something much stronger than the ideologic differences. And I, I really appreciate this, and I think it's uh, that's the way things should be. In general, I think I think that. I work with many different people in my work as well. Our pharmacist is an Arab uh, Bedouin guy. I work in the university with very very many different people. I think when you connect to the to the person themselves. And I think when of, you know, as a family, when we connect to each other and not to the ideology, I think that's, that's real. It's not just to... Uh, it's not just to deny it and, and put it aside. No, it's very real. And a family maybe is a microcosmos of, of what it should be like in general. The tribes of Israel were always very, very different. And when you look at the uh, description in the Tanakh, also each tribe had very different characteristics. They even fought each other quite fiercely. Maybe that's one thing we have to learn, how, how to take the advantages of the different, uh, mm-hmm. the different tribes, so <laughs> even within the family. So that's me, I'm glad we did this. It was really... One of the best uses I've done of myself <laughs> being a radio reporter, using this chance to get, get us to talk about these things. Wow, toda rabagam. Yochai Metal and Tmira Feinsilver. We hope you enjoyed this little peek into another one of the many interviews that don't end up on the show. 
Once again, this is an experiment for us. So let us know if you'd like to hear more of these, or less, or none at all. Either way, we'll be back very soon with a brand new Israel Story episode. Till then, as always, you can find us on social media. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all under Israel Story. I'm Mishi Harman, and from all of us here at Israel Story, Shalom Shalom, and Yalla Bye. Shirim Shana Balechoni, Ani Nose Aumadi, Alma Yaumania, Vach Nafshi Odhomia, Miam Sada Shela Sicho, Yerushalayim Baslicho, Mechov Kineret Vachsi. Sibot זה בית, כאן זה לב, ואותך אני לא עוזב. אבותינו השורשים, ואנחנו הפרחים, המנגינות, שבט אחים ואחיות.